Hello and welcome to my vlog. Today we're going to talk about a very delicate subject. Stillborn children. Fetuses, children who have never actually been born. Spiritism has told us that these children are not lost or forgotten. Many are raised in the spirit realm. Let's explore this subject further. All life is sacred and precious to the spirit world. Spiritism tells us that upon conception, the merger of spirit to flesh occurs. A distinct spirit gestates in the mother's womb. While some pregnancies are terminated naturally or unnaturally, the question answered by the spirit Arnell to the Reverend Yuval Owen is what happens to babies who have never taken a breath of fresh air. Arnell tells us about the children who are raised in the spirit world. In addition, spiritist literature relates there are different paths that could be taken when a pregnancy is aborted. Some spirits are taken from the fetus and put back into the original spirit body. They may have been originally assigned to a particular mother, and if an abortion occurs, they may wait until the next opportunity. This may be the case where the spirit waiting to be born has a connection with the mother that needs to be played out in a mother-to-child relationship. Damaged Paraspirit Nevertheless, the majority of babies that die either soon after birth or are stillborn do so for a reason. The purpose lies in the relationship of the spirit and the paraspirit and the paraspirit to the body. The paraspirit connects the body to the spirit. The paraspirit can influence the body as it is forming and even during life. When a person harms their own body through a drastic event, such as a suicide, they not only harm the physical vessel, but the paraspirit too. If a person threw themselves in front of a train or causes a similar devastation of a corporeal body, the injuries to the paraspirit, which is influenced by the form of the body, is immense. Only a reset of the paraspirit to a normal human form can ensure a safe birth. In the book Memoirs of a Suicide, an instructor tells a group of spirits how a person who had severe injuries must go through certain steps in order to attain a successful birth and incarnation. Unfortunately, they will reincarnate just as they are. Nothing can be done for them except return them to the flesh. That is the therapy imposed on them to correct the overall imbalance of their vibrations, thus creating a sort of trial run for new attempts at growth in the future. This therapy, made easier to bear by the prayers that are ministered to them daily in sympathetic, gentle, and beneficial currents emitted from here on their behalf, is all that these poor brothers and sisters can receive for their time being despite our great desire to see them serene and happy. Trial run means a union of the spirit to the body via the paraspirit. This may mean a stillbirth or just a brief time alive outside the mother's womb. This short episode is enough to reform the paraspirit to the intended structure of a human body. It is as if a cast was made for a statue that was imperfect. The metal was poured into the broken mold, then when the mold was removed, the statue was flawed. The mold would be replaced by the corrected version, and the metal would be remelted and re-poured into the mold, thereby creating a perfect statue. The paraspirit must be perfect to create a healthy human, hence some type of birth event must be used to repair the extensive damage. The Problems of a Stillborn we speak of childbirth into these realms of those who come forth from the earth sphere but have not been endowed with a separate individuality therein. These children come here asleep, and you will realize that their first awakening is that process here which answers to birth on earth. They have never breathed the atmosphere, nor seen the light, nor heard any of the sounds of earth. In brief, none of their bodily senses have been exercised in the way for which they were prepared by their natural formation. The organs of the senses are, therefore, nearly, but not quite, perfect in their structure. Moreover, the brain has never been called upon to interpret their messages. 
and so the child of earth lacks earthly qualities empirically while they have them potentially these conditions do not apply to a child who has been actually born into earth life even though he may have but a few moments or even less of life before he passes on hitherward arnell tells us why the spirit world must take special care of a stillborn but he leaves unanswered as to why does the spirit realm spend so much time and effort in raising a spirit from before their natural term in the womb all the way to spirit adulthood wouldn't it be better just to let the spirit return to their damaged form and wait for the next opportunity i have not yet seen the answer to this question in any spiritist literature i have read to date but i have a theory i believe that in the infinite wisdom and love that the spirit realm has for us that for spirits who have suffered so much in life and came to an ignoble end most probably after repeated lifetimes of failures that these spirits are given a radical reset a chance to completely retool their character they are re-raised in the spirit realm surrounded by love to give them a chance to return to a normal path of ascendancy in their spirit quest to become a pure spirit without this boost this major operation on their character and personality outright failure could persist for eons which would be a tragedy for the aspiring spirit and for many loving spirits who have tried to assist the nurturing process the spirit arnell then explains what must be done to prepare the stillborn for life in the spirit realm the problem therefore which they have to solve who take these children in hand is not a small one for it is necessary both that the organs be dealt with so that a natural progress may attend the child and also that the brain receives its lesson in case of an infant a few minutes old this connection between the brain and the organs of senses has been established and can be used in the maturing of those faculties dependent for their exercise on those organs but a stillborn child brings not that connection and it has to be made on this side once that is done the progress is merely a matter of orderly development on the same lines as that of ordinary children arnell explains the preferred method to complete the connection from the baby spirit to his paraspirit to the spirit remnants of his physical body the first method is to expose the child in spirit to the spirit of his mother this is accomplished while the mother is asleep and free to wander the spirit world when the baby and mother are brought together a type of birth is experienced by the baby only after that does the child feel to be a separate entity the bond between a mother and her child is stronger than you may believe the process of a normal birth and childhood is revealed in the book missionaries of the light inspired by dr andre louise psychographed by chico xavier the process of building up a body for full independence in a new reincarnation takes seven years from the time of birth to the seventh birthday a child will have a guardian spirit constantly looking out for them andre luis's mentor explains thusly you are aware that the human body has its vegetative activities per se but you may not yet know that the paraspiritual body which gives form to the cellular elements is strongly rooted in the blood in the fetal organization the blood elements are a gift from the mother's body soon after rebirth a period of different assimilation of organic energies takes place where the reincarnated self rehearses the consolidation of its new experiences in this new cycle of physical life it is only at age seven that it can begin to preside on its own over the blood formation process which is the basic element for the equilibrium of the paraspiritual body our pre-existent form blood therefore can be regarded as the divine fluid that underpins our activities on the physical plane and through its continual flow within the physiological organism it furnishes us with a symbol of the eternal movement of the sublime energies of the infinite creation hence a child's body is still forming to its spiritual outline until around seven years of age mothers out there reading this the cutting of the umbilical cord is just a symbol your vital energies love of course is always there 
still assist your child years after their birth. Imagine the care for a child jettisoned from their mother prematurely. The mother spirit is still tied to that child. Visiting their loved one at night and giving love and comfort so the child may restart building their personality in the spirit world. Throughout the childhood of the stillborn, they are, if possible, kept in contact with their physical mother, thus supplying them in an anchor of love from the earthly sphere. Arnell tells us there are differences between children who never reach the earth alive. There is always some little difference between such children and those others who have been born on earth. They are lacking in some of the sterner virtues, and on the other hand, they are more spiritual in their personality and outlook. But as the earth-born children progress in spiritual development, and the stillborn children develop their knowledge of earth by contact with their mothers, and later with their other relatives, so the differences is minimized until they are able to associate on quasi-equal terms of loving friendship and to help in the mutual giving of what each lacks. So the earthborn are mellowed in sweetness, and the others are strengthened in character, and, both being included in a community, infuse an element of variety which is pleasurable as it is of profit. Arnell states that the association with the parents of the spirit child is vital for the child's development. All of this goes on in the midst of dreams for the parents. Unknowingly, the mother and father are responsible for raising a young spirit, and all they have are fleeting remnants of dreams. Tragically, if the parents are of a wicked disposition, the child must be separated from the mother and father until the child is mature enough to understand the circumstances. Often, the child will assist the parents from the spirit world to follow the path of the light. Motherhood and fatherhood starts before the birth of a child. It begins at the conception of the child. Life is precious and it serves a purpose. We, our children, seen and unseen, are on this planet and in the surrounding spheres so we may learn to become mature and civilized spirits, so we may become a productive member of the spirit realm and contribute the force of our will to the creation of worlds and life to promote even more spirits. If you are interested more in how the spirit world guides us, please read my book, How We Are Guided by Spirits, Book 3 of Spiritism. Book 3 illustrates the ground game of the spirit world via the messages of multiple spirits to the Reverend G. Val Owen. We are presented examples of how the spirit realm above us peers down upon their unruly students. The process of tracking and modifying behavior on an individual and a collective basis is revealed. Even the broader direction of human society in the future is posted for all to see. God bless.